This video is going to be a full course on AI SEO. Now within this course, we're gonna be using AI to do a lot of the main boring SEO work so that you can have a faster strategy to make more money and get more traffic. So I'm going to cover a lot. So if you stick to the end, you'll have a full understanding of how to implement this for your own site. So we're gonna cover how to cluster keywords and create content silos with AI, how to master search intent with AI, how to get AI to write SEO optimized content and then humanize it, how to analyze URLs for on-page SEO, guest posts, outreach, even how to automate everything with two new automation tools. I'll also be sharing all the exact AI frameworks and prompts throughout this course. So if you're interested in getting those, uh, along with my free AI masterclass, make sure to click the link in the description below and get started with your online business once and for all. I'll send them right to you. So we have a lot to cover, so let's get right into it. So before we get into the exact prompts, let's talk about the current SEO landscape. But first, I just want to show you some of my recent traffic that I've gotten with AI. So you can see here in Ahrefs, you look back in March, my site got hit with a bunch of random Google updates in 2022 and three, and traffic was a lot lower. Uh, this, this isn't fully accurate. I think the lowest my traffic ever was was about 50,000 visits a month. But you can see here with the new strategies we've incorporated, more you know organic pages going up and then traffic going up to the highest level it has been. And then you can see here too in my Google Analytics, it just keeps, we keep having higher and higher days. So we're getting, you know, 7,200 users a day. Based on sessions, uh, we're pacing for about 250,000 sessions a month from 50,000. So a 5X-ish traffic increase in 2024 with these new strategies. You can see I'm ranking for things like how to start a blog, really difficult keyword 86. I'm ranking number three for that above Reddit and some other sites and Forbes. Affiliate programs, ranking number four for that above some other sites down here. Best AI SEO tool, something we're talking about in this video, number one for that. So we're getting a lot of new traffic for new things. So I just want to kind of show you that, show you some of the stuff that's working. So in the current landscape, we have to kind of talk about traditional SEO versus AI SEO. What the heck's the difference? So when I think about traditional SEO, it's a little bit more manual. So we're using SEO tools to do keyword research, looking for different matching terms and finding keywords and based on search volume and competition and difficulty and things like that. And then there's manual content writing. So when I first started my blog in 2019, I wrote everything myself, every single word I typed with my fingers, right? And then I outsourced to a human paying them money. Uh, and then manual on page SEO. So we still do some of that stuff, right? We still have to have the right headings, the right formatting, the right schema markup and things like that. Then there's like manual technical SEO, manual SEO analysis. Typically it requires people to do things. Whereas AI SEO, it's a little bit different. So you can do keyword research with AI. You can write the content. You can learn about what you should do for the on-page SEO. You can do technical audits. You can analyze pages and it requires software, which, you know, Claude, ChatGPT, those are all free. Those are the main ones we would use. Now, a lot of videos like Promise just paste, copy and paste everything with AI. And that's really not what this is about. This is about using AI to speed up the process. And this is about knowing where human input is needed. That's really the most important part. So we can't have AI dictate our entire strategy, write all of our content for us without editing it or even checking it. So we have to have human input at the beginning and then at the end. So that's pretty much what we're doing. We have to kind of create our own keyword strategy with some AI tools, but then backing it up with our own knowledge and then humanizing the content at the end. So the other current state of SEO before we get into the prompts is, you know, there's been lots of Google algorithm updates, like a ton in 2022, 2023, March, 2024, May, all of these different algorithm updates. And it's been brutal on some blogs. If you have gotten decimated by Google and you just see a bunch of Forbes and media sites and Reddit and Quora and these crappy results, it happened across a lot of different niches. And, you know, the thing that I found is like, if, if niches were already really competitive, like software, business, finance, they got way more competitive. Whereas if you're in something like hobby niches, they're not as competitive and they never were. So it's like Google's kind of propping up authority and these different types of sites, but it's just something to keep in mind that we have to weather the storm. My blog has weathered the storm. You know, there was periods where I started in 2019, traffic went up up to you know 400,000, down to 200, up to 300, down to 100, down to 50, back up to 200. So it's like, you just have to know that this is a long-term game and you have to weather the storms. It's also about eat and helpful content. So Google has said, based on current SEO, that it's not about, don't, every single article should not be an SEO article, which is kind of crazy because the whole SEO landscape is like, how do I optimize this keyword and this article to rank? Now they're saying, well, make the most helpful content to your audience. Don't worry about so much about every single article being SEO optimized. And I don't really agree with that sentiment because I tested that theory 
in another video I showed where I spent a bunch of money and I tried all this humanized non-SEO stuff and guess what? It didn't work. So really today it's a volume game. So big media sites are publishing faster. That means that we have to publish a little bit faster. We just use the AI tools to help us do that. There's also more personalized content. If you look at like Google News Feed or like your YouTube feed or even sometimes how you've Googled results and then you get you know, based on your past search history and stuff, it'll give you slightly different top 10 results for Google. We are entering a world with AI and personalization and machine learning where the personalized search result is becoming more and more of a thing. So we just have to be aware of that. Really smarter, algorith smarter algorithms is the need for AI to match the query. So for example, if we are creating content around a certain keyword, like what is actually in the article? Is it in the right format? Is it answering the right question? And sometimes you need AI to do that because AI will tell us like the semantic keywords that we couldn't think of on our own, other headings and things. It just gives us, the, the AI just gives us like a tool to, to tell us things that we wouldn't have figured out on our own. Basically, this is exactly how to format helpful content. These are all the clusters of content that you need in this niche. And here's how to do the SEO. And here's the semantic keywords you should add. So it's like having an assistant for you. And there's really a difference here. We're gonna cover automation at the end. We're getting into the prompts here in a second. But there's a difference between AI and automation. So AI is the intelligence behind the prompting. So you can use something like Claude, ChatGPT, create system prompts, create frameworks, and get it to do the same thing replicated over and over again. But that's the intelligence behind it. That's using knowledge to create written words. Then we have automation, which is a different thing. That is using a tool to then take that intelligence and publish it immediately. So we can go from a keyword all the way to WordPress at a published post with automation, with different tools, uh, stringing together tools. So those tools are getting smarter too. So that's currently where we're at. Now let's get into the actual prompts and do these one at a time. So this first one I have here is uh, what I call the content cluster and silo tool. I kind of like it, I created it. And what you do is you just copy this. So it's a system prompt with a role, task, and context, a process, and all of these things to follow. And I'm gonna use Claude for this. You can use Claude or ChatGPT. ChatGPT is best for URL-based analysis and things where you're looking at specific URLs and different data. Whereas Claude is best for like the actual written content and niche ideas. So I like it, you can get a free account with limited number of inputs, and then it's 20 bucks a month if you wanna uh, purchase it. So this is just saying, what's the main topic you want? So it's just asking you, what's the topic? And then it's giving me a full content cluster. All right, so I'm just gonna put in a topic like hobby farming. You have a small farm, maybe five, 10 acres, and you're doing that. So now it'll give you different keywords, an explanation, the article idea, a couple article ideas, and you'll just see as it goes down, these are the different keywords. So it's got small scale livestock, farm to table cooking, beekeeping, hobby farm income streams. And then it creates the actual silo structure for some of this. So you have things around getting started with hobby farming, planning, equipment, regulations, crop production, livestock, farm management, farm to table, and then community and resources. So these are just small little silos that you can create. And then I'm gonna say something like, let's focus because it'll give you some ideas and you have to kind of know the niche a little bit and like get a feel for what you want to do. So I'm gonna say, let's focus on crop production. And the other one was farm management. Give me a silo of 10 articles for each. So it'll then do it. So it's kind of taking like you can run a system prompt and then you add more inputs to it to get better outputs. So for example, in crop production, you have intro to organic vegetable gardening, soil health and management, composting, crop rotation, pest management, weed control, all of these different things, and then farm management silos. So it's helping you create clusters of content. Another one I have here is the AI niche hunter, niche hunter. So this gives you 20 keyword ideas. So the first one gives you 20, uh, 15 informational, five transactional. The second one will give you 20 affiliate keywords. So I'm just gonna paste that in. And then it'll ask me for my niche and then it'll give me five sub niches. So I'm gonna say camping is my niche. And then it'll say, all right, so backpacking is one. I really like backpacking actually. Family camping, winter camping, hammock camping, and eco-friendly. So then it's gonna ask me, which one do you wanna choose? I'm gonna say backpacking. And then it'll give me 20 keyword ideas for affiliate articles. So you can see here, uh, to make money with affiliate marketing and recommend products with SEO, best ultralight backpacks, water filters, trekking poles, sleep, lightweight sleeping bags, bear canisters, backpacking meals, and it just goes on and on and on. So it gives you a ton of initial keyword ideas. So AI, like the old traditional way of doing SEO is just use a tool like Ahrefs, which is, which is quite expensive to find all of these different keywords. So a problem with a lot of the SEO tools is that by the time that they get search volume in a tool like Ahrefs or in a tool like SEMrush, 
it's almost can be too late sometimes because everybody uses those tools. Everybody's finding those keywords. So when you have a little bit of niche experience, you can use AI prompts to find different helpful content ideas. Because if I had a blog and I was talking about backpacking, I, it's giving me, the AI is giving me all the products that I need to talk about. I can't guess all of these based on inputting things into Ahrefs. For example, I could put in best camping and it might give me camping tents, camping backpacks, things like that. But I would, might not even think about best ultralight or things that like I'm trying to create seed keywords myself. So the AI is giving us ideas that we then we can validate if you wanted to with a tool like Ahrefs or Key Search if you want a cheaper one or something like that. You can validate it. But my argument is for helpful content to create really good SEO based content that Google likes, you have to be helpful and being helpful actually is having the right articles. So actually covering the right basis. The problem with SEO tools on their own sometimes is that we focus so much on volume difficulty and these exact metrics that we lose sight of the actual blog itself, the actual, you know, the, the whole thing. Like we pick random articles that don't really make sense because they're good in an SEO report instead of just creating a really comprehensive SEO strategy, not worrying so much about what the numbers say in the report because oftentimes Ahrefs is wrong. I have plenty of articles that I've had where it says zero to 10 on the keyword volume and it's really like hundreds or thousands. So it's just estimating. So AI can help us with our initial keyword strategy. All right, let's get into the next prompt. That is the AI search intent tool. So this is really important when we're actually, before we even start creating the content with AI, we have to get the search intent right. And what this does is it helps us tell us like what are the audience segments that we need? What is the search intent behind this keyword? So we take a keyword that we got. We used the previous prompts to get like 20 keyword ideas. We can validate or not, that's optional with other SEO tools. And we take that keyword and we can put it into this search intent tool and it'll give us, before we even write the article, it'll give us some really good information about you know, how we should write this and who we're writing for. So I'm gonna take it, paste it into Claude again. And this is gonna ask me, please give me a keyword. Just to get started, give me a keyword that you wanna do. So I'm gonna say like backpacking tents. So what this does is it'll give me a pretty good search analysis. So it's a commercial investigation uh, keyword, meaning people are looking for actual products to buy. This could be called transactional or comparative transactional, whatever you wanna call it. So it gives us an H H1 title, right? It's giving us a pretty optimized title based on my prompt, like best bag and tents, lightweight options. It's a product comparison guide. The main goal is to find a tent for their needs and budget. The biggest one I like, so yes, there's key expectations, what you should write about, what to avoid, overly technical jargon, focusing on only high-end products, neglecting real world performance. So it says what you should do here. The one that I like the most is key audience segments. So when you're writing an affiliate article too, like for SEO, you need to end the search journey. That is the main thing with SEO. Ending the search journey, meaning they finish on your article, they don't go back and click another one. Now to end the search journey, you have to have a comprehensive article that covers all the bases, which means it has to cover all the key audience segments. With search, we don't know who is searching. It could be a mom, a grandma, a teenager, tired father that didn't sleep much last night like myself and is in the office on a Sunday and there's no actual AC in Texas here because they turned it off and it's actually 80 degrees in this building, I'm freaking sweating. Could be that person searching. But uh, what I like here is it says, uh, budget conscious backpackers, ultralight hiking enthusiasts, couples and solo travelers, expedition backpackers, novice campers entering the scene. So that kind of dictates when I'm writing this affiliate article, I have the top five backpacking tents. Who am I writing to? Number one, you got to differentiate. So you got to say number one, my best one is best for um, probably the number one one, I would say best overall uh, affordable option. Number one. Number two could be like best for couples. Number three, like best ultra light for solo travelers, like the lightest one possible. And then best beginner entry level one. So that's just giving you like, that's how you can frame it when you're writing it. So if you don't do that and you just say, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, could you rank for it? Sure, maybe, but I think it's always best to think about the audience you're writing for. So that's where the AI search intent tool comes in. You put in any keyword and it will tell you who you're writing for and what type of content it is. All right, let's get to the next AI SEO prompt and that is the AI content machine. I made up that name, I think it sounds pretty cool, but it's five prompts in one. So I had a couple in one, now this is five in one. So let's just go through the whole thing. Um, we're gonna take it, it's about five pages long. We're gonna copy it and we're gonna paste it in. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna go through a full process, full step-by-step -step process to write the article. What is your main niche? Backpacking. It's gonna give me and go through that original process that we had with the niche selector. So this is another way to do it. 
But I'm gonna say, we can kind of skip ahead of this part because we can get, we can take out the first couple steps. So which sub niche would you like? I'm gonna say again, I'm gonna say ultra light backpacking. Now it'll give more ideas. So it'll do the same thing it did before. You can just go through this whole process informational articles and then it'll give transactional it'll give you the pillars so like the complete ultralight backpacking gear guide and then mastering ultralight backpacking techniques and all of that so i'm going to say let's do and then based on the keyword let me create the outline so i'm going to say i'm just going to say ultralight backpacking because that's like the ultimate guide that's what that one is and then what it'll do is it'll get create a full outline. So it's got the H1 title, the ultimate guide to ultralight backpacking, hike farther, faster, and smarter. So it has good, I've kind of trained on good search intent for the titles, gives you the meta description, gives you the intro and all the headings and stuff. So it has, you know, what is it? The benefits of going ultralight, core principles, essential gear that you need. It's a really good overall, you know, guide to ultralight backpacking in an outline format. And then it has a conclusion and it has a list of semantic keywords that you should have. Now, would you like me to generate the content for each section of this outline? I say yes. So you can use, you can start with the outline and, and publish it, uh, put it into WordPress and edit yourself. Or what it's gonna do here is now it's gonna write the intro. So it's the ultimate guide to ultralight backpacking. Picture this, you're standing on the trailhead ready to embark on a multi-day adventure, but instead of feeling weighed down by a massive vacuum, you feel light, agile, and excited. That's the magic of ultralight backpacking, folks. So it kind of writes, uh, I, I trained it to write in short and long sentences, burstiness, which AI doesn't do. Like a lot of the times AI will write stuff like in today's complicated digital landscape and like these really just jargon terms. So you got to kind of train it with version one, but here's this. And then it has, what is ultralight backpacking? All right, let's start with the basics. What is it? Well, it's not just blah, blah, blah. And then it goes through this whole thing all the way down and it's still writing and it's creating the content for us. So this is a really good prompt to take a keyword and create a full outline, write all the content, get it to a place where you can actually just put it into WordPress and start editing. Let's get to the next prompt and that is just a simple guest post outreach ideas prompt. So I'm gonna paste this one into, I'm gonna use ChatGPT for this because sometimes it's better with analyzing URLs. I'm gonna actually compare both. I'm gonna do it in both. What you have to do is you, you're looking for five to 10 high authority websites in your niche and then you enter your niche here. I'm gonna say camping and then I'm gonna see how these both do. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna see chat GPT does and then I'm gonna see what and again the last one here you just say keep going if it doesn't because sometimes it'll um, end like each individual output might end at a certain point and then it'll just finish and it keeps going and going and going so with this one I'm gonna say paste this in camping and I'm gonna see what both of them come up with so chat GPT has 10 ideas nomadic mat da 77 gives you a link right to the website it gives you a content gap, like articles focused on unique camping spots and national parks. So it gives you like, it finds the site, the domain authority, the contact information or a link to the site and then content gap ideas, what actual content you could create. So this is actually pretty good. It's giving the actual links and emails, which is pretty crazy. Sometimes it doesn't give you that in-depth information, but it's a good tool to kind of with your guest post outreach strategy for SEO. This one, as you can see, Claude doesn't do as well with this. So I need to perform a current web search, but I don't have the ability to do. How can I general approach, right? So that's why we're using ChatGPT for more of these like URL-based data types of information rather than Claude. Claude is best for the writing, uh, the like the actual niche selection content writing, and then ChatGPT is best for analysis. Now let's get to another AI SEO prompt, and that is SEO analysis. So again, this one works better in ChatGPT as Claude can't read URLs very well. So I'm gonna take this, copy the whole thing, paste it into chat GPT, and it will say, please provide the URL and keyword you would like me to analyze. Okay, so you, this is good for like, looking at an individual blog article of your own, seeing if you're missing anything. So I'm gonna find an article, and then I'm gonna paste it in here. Cut there while I find it, and then I'm gonna do it. So, all right, let's, all right, let's do my article on how to start a blog, and the keyword, is how to start a blog. So what it'll do is it'll look at different things. So it'll say, you know, we spent a bunch of time on it. So content depth, it's comprehensive. It includes steps of strategy and all that. URL structure is good, right? So you wanna have just the URL structure is the keyword. It's not too long. It doesn't have a year in it or something that can change. Keyword is included in the URL. That's good. Title is clear. It's effective. Internal links, there are numerous internal links. They're highly relevant, provide user. Meta description reflects the content. Primary keyword, how to start a blog is included, enhancing SEO in the meta description. It's well organized, clear structure. There's use of headings and bullet points. Paragraph lengths are kept short, which improves readability and all of that. So what could I do better? Well, I could have a better 
uh, meta description. Sure, I could have more visual content, images, infographics, I agree. I could have uh, more related articles and links. I could have more Q and A's for featured snippets, things like FAQ schema and things like that probably. And I could have more like actual comments, user generated content, that could be a good thing. And then my mobile is just such a long article that sometimes it's like, it just takes a while to load a 10,000 word, whatever it is, article on a phone. So we have lazy loading images, we have like WP Rocket and site speed and all of those things. But these are just good uh, examples. So if you have a new article and you want to just analyze it, just you can just take something like this, put it into chat GPT, and then it'll look at the individual things that I kind of trained it on. All right, so those are some decent, you know, AI SEO prompts that you can get again, if you click the link in the description below, we can send you those my top five. And also we, you know, the video on AI SEO would not be complete without talking about automation. So we have AI, we have like articles that we can create, we can go through the whole process of having the AI create the outline, write the stuff. But how do we speed this thing up even faster? And that is where we use automation. So there's a couple main options that you can do. The first one is make.com. And the second one is machined.ai. So make.com right here, we have a blog post builder. Now what this does, I have a full video on exactly every single step and what this entails. If you look at my channel. So I'm not going to cover the full, you know, it takes a lot to explain all of this, right? So there's different steps in this process. Now what we can see here is we can implement different automations with Claude, with ChatGPT. This is actually using both. So what this is doing is it's creating a webhook to start the process. It is then filling an Airtable, basically a spreadsheet. We put a keyword into a spreadsheet. And then what it does is it generates the outline, turns it into JSON, it writes the article based on the prompt that I showed you. And then it creates an image based on uh, Dolly 3 with ChatGPT, marks it down in the correct HTML format into Google Doc right into WordPress. So I can show you, you know, in, in the other video, I have the full step by step, like what is what are the settings in each individual thing? How do we get this set up? What do we do? Because this was kind of foreign to me even a couple weeks ago. I'm like, what is all this stuff? But it's really cool. You like every step in the process can pull back data from the previous steps. So for example, if I'm looking at Airtable at the end here, I can click here and it'll give me like, what, do, what data do you want to pull? And it's giving me possibilities from every single uh, template here, uh, module before. So you can do a lot of information in this. So this is really advanced, but you can go, it's, it's literally set up if you watch the other video, just from entering a keyword into a spreadsheet and it posts it in WordPress. So that's where we're at too, like automation tools are getting a lot smarter. So one option is make.com, you manually set this up. It's good if you wanna create automations too around like LinkedIn posts and social media posts and you can really automate all these different things, repurpose content, publish it to WordPress and then also publish it to social media. And what's cool is like you can constantly update and make this better. So like the, the, the prompts can be improved here. And as the as Claude and as ChatGPT gets smarter, the prompts get smarter, you get to the point where the, the, the finished posts keep getting better and better and better. Another option, a simpler option, maybe not, it's not as custom. So this is like a more custom option if you wanna put in your own prompts, put in your own data to make an article in the best possible way, which is what we're doing. The other option that's a little bit less robust, but way easier is machined.ai. So this is a tool that creates content clusters and then it creates all the articles for you. So for example, I click create cluster and then I put something in. So you can see here on the left, I've put in like smart home, smart home security. You know, you can put anything in. I'm gonna say like pets, dogs, dog breeds, right? If you have a pet blog and you can say your audience is uh, dog owners or potential dog owners looking to compare dog breeds. Now for that one, I'd probably do, you can do autopilot, like you can manually put the keywords in if you wanna use an AI tool or use an SEO keyword research tool and then put the cluster in yourself or you can do autopilot, you just click this and then you can say, how many do you want? For this one, I'd probably do large because there's probably, there's a lot of dog breeds to write about. But for this example, I'm just gonna click 10. And then what it does is it creates the cluster automatically. Now this is what, now what this is doing is actually giving us all the keywords around dog breeds. So it's not saying German Shepherd or Cocker Spaniel or all of those things. It's saying large dog breeds, article on the smartest, the toy, popular hunting. So these are really good too because these are lots of search volume on these. But you can see, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, you can see how simple this is. So the keyword large dog breeds right here, this one, you just select the length, very long. I'm going to use GPT 4.0. I'm going to say friendly tone. I've noticed that friendly is actually the best uh, humanized version. It sounds the best. First person perspective, 
do some research. You can configure these options where you do automatic research and uh, it links to relevant external links, uh, relevant sources. Humanize for sure. You definitely want to click humanize and then you click write. And it uses uh, GPT-40 to actually write it. And is this as good as a custom make.com Claude template that you use? No, it's not quite as robust as that. However, it's very good to get an initial draft done where it automatically goes into WordPress because you can see here there's CMS connections. You just integrate WordPress. You basically click one thing, you put your site in, you do it automatically. It goes over there, press a button, and it's automatically there. It's like the easiest thing. So if I were to look here, it's writing the article right now. It doesn't take very long. And it can automatically publish to WordPress if you want, or it can just write it. You can look at it. You can save it as a draft in WordPress. Other features I forgot to mention is you can enable featured images. So you can say, I want a Dolly 3 featured image, and I want it to be in cyber kinetic, cybernetic art, and I want it to be orange. All right, so then it, everyone will create that. And then if you choose interlinking, it'll also and prevent duplicate links. It'll interlink all of these together. So that's if you're publishing all of them, because if you don't publish one, there might be some dead, broken links in here. And then you'll notice it says it's ready to go, so you can click read, and it'll show you exactly this. So I didn't select a featured image for this, but it's, right, it just has all the content laid out like this. You can look at it. So it has a bunch of different stuff, internal links, external links. So it's the easier version, right? We don't have to create some uh, make.com automation for ourselves. We just freaking log in choose some keywords and then it writes it for us. However, it writes it with GPT-40, which sometimes isn't good enough. So we have to humanize the content. So we wanna take it, publish it, but then we also wanna add our own elements. So we have to definitely validate the data, make sure it's accurate. There's no like inaccurate data, especially like I wouldn't wanna write affiliate articles in here with just AI because it's gonna give you random pricing information. Like that is not very ethical to just publish random AI articles where you're recommending people buy stuff. I would not do that. But to humanize, we wanna add our own experience in the intro. So like why they should trust you, what the experience that you have in the niche to build some eat and authority. Also you wanna humanize the intro. Like the intro is pretty important. Write a good hook, write good information. And then throughout the content, you know, adding your own experience that's gonna really stand out. Because you don't want crappy AI content. You don't want to just publish from here. This is where most videos end. They just say, publish, publish, publish. But that doesn't really work. Like, does, is Google going to penalize you? Not necessarily yet, but you never know in the future. So you might as well humanize the content to your best of your ability. Basically, all you have to do is kind of write based on your experience in the introduction, add your own human take on things, add your own images. So like, if you're in a hobby niche, Go out one day, take like 100 pictures of yourself doing random stuff, and then you can put it into the articles over time. If you're in a technical or software or business niche, screenshots showing examples of things is usually what the images are. So you add images, you add your own take, you talk in the first person perspective, you add your own human experience into the article and not just publish it based on AI. So based on the current SEO landscape and AI SEO and prompts and automation, what we need to realize is that we still, as a business strategy, we still need to have human inputs at the beginning. So thinking about what is my niche? What do I wanna be known for? What is my keyword strategy? How am I gonna generate money through affiliate marketing, through selling my own products, through ad revenue? We figure out the keyword strategy, we get it into an AI system, an AI automation system for ourselves to get it as far along as humanly possible in the fastest time frame possible so that editing is a breeze and is easy. And then we come back in at the end and optimize those things. We need to optimize the on-page SEO. Make sure the URL structure is good, the, the keywords in the heading, the right format of H2 headings, the right semantic keywords in the article. All those things I've talked about in other videos, uh, on-page SEO stuff. Humanize the content and publish because really it's a volume game. To really use AI for SEO, we have to go deep. We have to build topical authority in areas that, you know, big media sites, Reddit, they're not going there. So we can forge our own path with AI, finding, you know, thousands of keywords in one specific niche, and we just go deeper than anyone else in one area. We build topical authority, we give our human experience, we build a real brand for ourselves, and we monetize with affiliate marketing, ads, sponsors, and selling our own product. So that's how you do it. If you're interested in learning more, you want the prompts, you want the frameworks, you want the AI masterclass, make sure to click the link in the description and top comment below, and I'll send you all of that stuff. So check out other videos on my channel. You know, there's others on the fullmake.com automation, like two, three hour videos on affiliate marketing, you know, getting a good framework to start all of this stuff. So I hope you liked it. Please like the video, thumbs it up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another video.